Hello devs, Sid the IT guy here and in this video we will take a look at an example of how we can create products using the product create mutation of Shopify GraphQL API. So if we take a look at the API documentation, we can see on the right hand side that there is a mutation provided with a product create name and inside that a parameter has to be provided named input and the input should be of type product input and the rest of the fields uh, we can specify to expect some kind of output from the API. So in product, we can have some attributes of the product returned back to us so we can work with it. Then the shop to get the info about the shop and the user errors, which will tell us uh, which field has failed and what is the message associated to it. So in the documentation, they explicitly say that we should not create a large mutation at once uh, containing the tags, the variants, the inventory quantities and everything and uh, hit the API all at once. Instead they tell us that uh, that we create the product with variants and we are not to specify any tags or collections on it and uh, any kind of inventory quantities for each variant. After the product is created then they are recommending us to add the tags to it and after that the inventory bulk toggle activation mutation on each inventory item to activate it at the appropriate locations which just means that if your store has multiple locations um, on a geographic map then uh, create the product first and then uh, assign the inventories to each of the locations for that product and at the last step uh, use, use the inventory bulk adjust quantity at location mutation to adjust the inventory quantities but in our example it is going to be quite simple so if you take a poll on the main branch of my app then if you click on products then uh, there is a there is a listing of the products you already have in the system but uh, you will see a button on the top right here called create product so if you click it uh, it will open up a simple form where you can put the name and title here the description the product type the vendor the tags the title the sku the price for it and the compare at price for it and you will see an add a variant button which if you click will duplicate this uh, row right here and with a remove button so if you click the remove button it will get removed like this but uh, there is always one variant which is required Otherwise, Shopify will create it by itself, but uh, in, our, in our case, we will have one variant as compulsory. So let's fill out the form a little. So we can say test shirt. This is a description. Product type is clothing. Vendor is a Shopify app, let's say. Tags is, I have some pre, yeah, comma separated tags. Then in the title, we can say size Excel. SKU 123 price can be 550 compared price can be 750 and then we can click the create button now uh, I have written the code already but I want to take take you through it step by step so if we dump the request then I can show you what kind of request we are getting in the back end so if I, let me zoom in a little so this is the request that is that is uh, received in the back end the title is test shirt the description the product type vendor tags and here are some uh, information about the variants so the title is itself an array the sku is an array the variant price is an array and the compare at price is an array so we are working with this request to try to convert it to a mutation of a product create so let's go ahead and uh, delete that so in the first step I'm doing is uh, taking the user which is authenticated then uh, assigning the Shopify store associated with that user and then I'm initializing this variable called product create mutation inside this uh, you will see the product create is there and in the input uh, there's an opening brace here and a closing brace here so it should be uh, parenthesis should match but inside this there is a function that I'm calling which is defined right here but let's not get into it right now uh, let me explain further and uh, there is another opening brace here and inside this we have mentioned that for the product we only need the id from it and in the user errors we only need the field and the message so we can identify which field has failed and what is the message associated to it then i'm taking this mutation variable uh, which is a simple string again 
So it says mutation opening parenthesis and closing parenthesis right here and inside that the product create mutation that we just created above. Then I'm taking the endpoint which is always graphql.json for uh, the graphql api as i have mentioned before in headers we are calling this function that will return us the headers required for making the call and inside the payload it's, it's an array with a query index and inside that the mutation object uh, is there which is a string yeah so in the response uh, variable i am making the api call which is of type post the endpoint is there, uh, no URL param, so it is null, then the headers and then the payload. And I'm dumping uh, the response that I'm receiving on the screen. Now, let's take a look at the example of how we are forming the payload. So the payload is uh, an array and at the last we are imploding it to convert that array into a string separated by commas. So here we see the title is a request title as it is mentioned in the documentation. So product create has some arguments and these arguments are of type product input. So here we see product input dot uh, title should be down here somewhere. Yeah, the title. So the same thing has to be used here. Then the published is true, which means that uh, we want the product to be listed on the store straight away. So only product with an active status can be published. Use publishable publish instead. Anyway, it is deprecated. But for now it works. So you should use publishable publish instead. So it says use publishable publish instead. But in this case, uh, we, won't, we don't need it. Uh, it still works. And the vendor is the request vendor that we get from the front end. Uh, vendor is another. Yeah, right here. So this is the one that we need. And uh, then we start checking if the DESC parameter is there or not. HTML to it. Then if the product type is uh, present in the request and uh, not is array, we don't need to check. Yeah. If it is present, then uh, take the product type. Then if the tags are present, we don't need this here as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if the tags are present, then take the tags. But this is the one that we have to take care of it because we want the tags to be separated out uh, with the comma separations. So first we are exploding it uh, because from the back end we are receiving it as a string. But then we are imploding it again so that uh, it is comma separated and each tags are separate. Then the wagon title is uh, dealt with. So if it is present in the request and if it is an array, then uh, first take the options. And in the options, the wagon title is uh, imploded and converted to a string. So we can say that it is of the type uh, size Excel. And in the variants, this is another function that is uh, that will return the variance information. So here in this function, we are just checking if a uh, variant title is present or not. If it is, then initialize an empty array and uh, loop over it as key and variant title. So here we are. Uh, here we have populated some fields which are of the type variants. So here, so product input dot variants is of this type product variant input. So if we open up in a new tab, yeah, here it has its own uh, set of attributes that we have to map it uh, properly. So here we can see taxable. So it also has a taxable argument here. So we have used it, then the title. Okay, so we can use the title here. So let's use the title and uh, yeah. So here we can use the title of it. Then the compare at price, uh, we are just comparing if uh, it should be greater than zero for the variant CA price array that we are receiving from the front end. If it is, then use that value, otherwise use null. Then the SKU and then the options and the options is the variant title itself because the options and the variants differ in Shopify. But in our example, since it is a simple one, then um, we can take the variant title as the options itself. And then the price is the variant price, the key index for it. And at the end, we are imploding it again uh, with a comma and we are returning back the array that we initialized here. 
yeah so this is the explanation uh, part so let me now just run the code and let's see we submit yeah the status code is 200 and the body okay so some error got thrown okay so the tags has a has a problem because it doesn't have the double quotes on each of the index uh, here okay so let me handle that so for the tags we can say this hello, return tags We will return val a simple string and uh, for each tags as tag, we can just say return val dot equals tag. Actually, we can initialize this as an empty array and uh, this will take like this yeah so it will contain that and at the end we can just return implode return val so it should work like that so first we are exploding it then we are looping over it and adding that uh, double quotes over it and then we are imploding it and returning it back so let's resubmit let's see what happens now so now the status code is 200 and the body index contains an array which is of the data and the extensions and in the data we can see that there is a product create and in the product create if we click then we have the product and user error is blank and inside this we have the id so now we can verify that indeed the api call has succeeded and the product has been created so let me add one more thing here so here we can just product dispatch um, what kind of user and store okay so we can so after after the api call succeeds we can just dispatch uh, this job that will sync the products again into the app and we can just say return back with success and it can say uh, product created yeah yeah that seems good so if we resubmit it now it will create a duplicate product but this is not a problem for us because this is an example that i'm showing you here so it says product created let me zoom out a little yeah and after that if i go in products and i just click sync then down here we can see this don't mind this one this one was created when i was testing the app myself testing the code myself i meant and this is the one that create that got created just now okay now uh the improvements on this so in the create product uh one thing that you may notice is there is no images field um i haven't worked on it yet but this does sound like a code review video and um, I will create a review video over this where I will add another field uh, through which you can either upload the images that you have in your system or you can provide a URL directly. So it can be appended to the mutation and the product will start reflecting it. So if I showed you here, yeah. So here we have our first variant created. Yeah, so if I showed you, showed, 
So if I show you the example, here we have our test shirt 2, which is the last product that we created here. And these are the details that will reflect on the Shopify. So here's the first variant, which is the up options. Then uh, it is the 650 and the compare at price is 750, but it's not showing here. And here we have the category, which is clothing. The product type is clothing too. The vendor is Shopify app too. I had, I had to do this so I could identify properly. And if we check the preview, how it would look like on the Shopify store when you start selling this product, then here we see the 750 cutoff and here we see the 650 which is on sale. So it is only the first variant which we have provided and we can, uh, here's the description and you can buy it. You can have your customers buy it. Okay, so this is it for the video. I do realize that I have to provide um, some sort of images to the product so it is easier, but uh, this will be covered in a code review video. So like and subscribe if you like this content, it will help me be motivated to put out more content like this. Thank you.